Novena to the Holy Ghost, First Day Holy Spirit, Lord of Light, from thy clear celestial height, thy pure beaming radiance give. Only one thing is important, eternal salvation. Only one thing, therefore, is to be feared, sin. Sin is the result of ignorance, weakness, and indifference. The Holy Ghost is the spirit of light, of strength, and of love. With his sevenfold gifts, he enlightens the mind, strengthens the will, and inflames the heart with love of God. To ensure our salvation, we ought to invoke the Divine Spirit daily, for the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. We know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself asketh for us. Prayer Almighty and eternal God, who has vouchsafed to regenerate us by water and the Holy Ghost, and has given us forgiveness all sins, vouchsafe to send forth from heaven upon us thy sevenfold spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, and fill us with the spirit of holy fear. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear friends, we often lack energy. Our bodies can feel weary. Our phone battery is always running low. And we may be running out of energy to practice faith, hope, and charity. We may lack the energy to resist temptation and to do good works. Certainly, we have received baptism and confirmation, but we probably feel somewhat spiritually lethargic after these past two months without Holy Mass and Communion and without frequent accessibility to confession. So, what can we do now to recharge our souls? What can we do to spiritually recharge with the energy we are lacking? Today, let us be of good heart. At Pentecost, in just nine days from now, God the Holy Ghost will come to renew our energy for the happiness and the well-being of our soul. So, to prepare for His coming on the liturgical feast of Pentecost, let us begin today a special novena of prayer and meditation. Let us follow in the footsteps of Mary and the apostles who persevered in prayer in the upper room during those nine days following the ascension of our Lord into heaven. For this purpose, Canons of the Institute will be giving you daily video meditations on the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the Liturgy of Pentecost, while they will lead you in Novena prayers in preparation for this great Pentecost feast. So. Let us make time and make extra efforts to participate in each day of this novena. Do not waste this new opportunity for fresh spiritual energy. First of all, to be spiritually energetic, we must understand the presence and the action of the Holy Ghost in our soul. God's divine energy is called sanctifying grace. Grace makes us share in God's own divine nature. Grace is the lifeblood of God himself, which flows in the arteries and the veins of our soul. The Pentecost liturgy speaks of the Holy Ghost as the divine guest, the divine guest living in the soul. He is within us with seven special gifts, which give us specific energy at particular moments in our lives. Today, years later, after your confirmation, do you remember the gifts of the Holy Ghost? Just as fire gives light and heat as energy, so also do these seven gifts give us spiritual energy. Four gifts to energize our mind with the light, the spiritual light we need to know God and to know how to please God in the various circumstances of our daily lives. And these 
four gifts which enlightened our mind are wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and counsel. Four gifts which give the light and energy to our mind, and then three gifts which energize our will with the heat we need to do an action, the good we know we should do. These three gifts to energize our will are fortitude, piety, and holy fear of the Lord. But if we have received grace and all of these gifts at baptism and in a fuller degree at confirmation, then why is it that we still feel drained of spiritual energy? Why are we so weak in doing God's will? Whether we realize it or not, we too often resist the Holy Ghost. Too often we prefer our own convenience, our own comfort zone. Too often we turn a deaf ear to the divine guest who is within our soul. Too often we prefer our own convenience and we resist the Holy Ghost by choosing mortal sin. But there are also many more subtle ways of resisting the Holy Ghost. More subtle ways that we frequently do not pay much attention to. His action within us is extremely delicate because God never forces us. God respects the free will which he himself gave us. So when a soul resists God deliberately and frequently, when we say no to that divine voice within us, then not only do we offend God, but also by stifling his divine voice, we force him little by little to be silent. According to St. Paul, we should never grieve the spirit we must resist even the smallest we must not resist even the smallest of his divine inspirations when we hear that divine voice speaking in our conscience we must never give god a deliberate no we must never say no to anything which we perceive that god is asking us to do so today let us look carefully and deep into our minds and our hearts, asking ourselves, am I conscious of saying no to God? Do I allow the busy distractions of life to drown out the voice of the Holy Ghost within me? Is the Holy Ghost using the voice of someone near me, perhaps a spouse, a friend, a colleague, or a priest, is the Holy Ghost using that person in efforts to get through to me? Am I listening only to what I want to hear? Or am I truly open to that particular good action that God is inspiring me to do? So the first key to having more energy is to be a good listener. To adapt ourselves to that divine voice of the Holy Ghost who dwells within our soul as its guest. So we can lack energy because we do not listen, but also because we do not pray. Without prayer, the gifts of the Holy Ghost remain dormant within us, like an unopened package of fresh batteries. If our phones are plugged in to charge longer than we spend time plugged into prayer and spiritual reading, then let us not be surprised that our souls lack energy. Prayer unleashes the spiritual energy of the Holy Ghost's grace and gifts. So invoke the Holy Ghost often, especially at the start of a new day or at the beginning of every new task. The more often and the more fervently we call upon the Holy Ghost, the more his divine energy will be roused to invigorate our thoughts, words, and actions, the more we will become prompt in carrying out God's will in our daily lives. 
Holy Mother Church is trying to teach us this habit of continual prayer. So her liturgy celebrates Pentecost for eight days, from the Vigil of Pentecost until the Saturday after Pentecost Sunday. There is a Pentecost octave, an octave of intense prayer and scripture meditation so that our souls can assimilate all the graces and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Each day of this octave, the Mass includes proper scripture readings to stimulate our thoughts and desires. Each day we pray the beautiful formulas of the sequence prayer, Veni Sancti Spiritus. Veni Sancti Spiritus is a, a liturgical poem, at least 800 years old, which is recited at Mass each day of the octave between the Epistle and the Gospel. Veni Sancti Spiritus, come Holy Ghost, O most blessed light, fill the inmost heart of thy faithful, cleanse that which is unclean, water that which is dry, heal that which is wounded. Come, thou Father of the poor, come, giver of gifts, bend that which is inflexible, correct what goes astray. Let us plan ahead to make these formulas from the Veni Sancti Spiritus, let's make some of these formulas part of our daily prayer practice. Our, our personal prayer as we go about our work and our routine each day. These little aspirations of the Veni Sancti Spiritus can be like a spiritual battle cry, rousing us to the spiritual combat of fidelity and charity in our daily lives. These short aspirations are very effective to awaken within us the divine energy which often lies dormant in our soul. It's dormant because we are plugged in too much to the things of this world, rather than to the powerful graces and the gifts which God has given to us. And so, dear friends, during the next two and a half weeks of this novena, and then the Pentecost octave which follows Pentecost Sunday, let us invoke the Holy Ghost. Let us allow him to spiritually energize our souls. Be sure to tune in each day on this novena to the devotions and the meditations which the canons will give you in this video series. Learn more about these gifts so that you can be more prompt in following the, whole, the inspirations of the Holy Ghost to practice these gifts in the concrete circumstances of daily life. Be sure to use your Mass Missal to learn more lessons and to pray more prayers, to read the Mass readings and Scripture lessons from that day. Offer up each day a particular sacrifice. Perform an act of mercy. Offer up a deed of charity each day to accompany your prayer. Prayer should make us more attentive and more outgoing to the needs of our neighbor and how we can serve God present in our neighbor. In these ways, you will begin to experience more of the joy and the peace which this world cannot give. Just like the sailor works on the boat, opening up all of the sails on that boat, so that the boat can receive the wind with its energy and propulsion. So also let us open up our souls to the inspiration of the Holy Ghost by listening to the divine guest within us and to do promptly whatever he tells us to do. And then with the help of Mary Immaculate, the spouse of the Holy Ghost and Mary star of the sea, we will arrive safe and sound with our loved ones at the home port of heaven, where we shall spend all eternity in the intimate life and the happiness of the Holy Trinity, God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Alleluia.
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Act of Consecration to the Holy Ghost on my knees, before the great multitude of heavenly witnesses, I offer myself, soul and body, to Thee, Eternal Spirit of God. I adore the brightness of Thy purity, the unerring keenness of Thy justice, and the might of Thy love. Thou art the strength and the light of my soul. In Thee I live and move and am. I desire never to grieve Thee by unfaithfulness to grace, and I pray with all my heart to be kept from the smallest sin against Thee. Mercifully guard my every thought, and grant that I may always watch for thy light, and listen to thy voice, and follow thy gracious inspirations. I cling to thee, and give myself to thee, and ask thee by thy compassion to watch over me in my weakness. Holding the pierced feet of Jesus, and looking at his five wounds, and trusting in his precious blood, and adoring his open side and stricken heart, I implore thee, adorable spirit, helper of my infirmity, so to keep me in thy grace, that I may never sin against thee. Give me grace, O Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Father and the Son, to say to thee always and everywhere, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Amen. Prayer for the Seven Gifts of the Holy Ghost O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven did promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thine apostles and disciples, Deign to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind with the light of thy divine truth. The spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. The spirit of fortitude, that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. The spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints. The spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable. The spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence toward God and may dread in any way to displease Him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of Thy true disciples and animate me in all things with Thy spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.